WWE Payback is finally here, and tonight I'm going to give you guys my full thoughts on everything that is going to happen tonight, which call this my preview and predictions video like usual. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down there, and if you haven't done so already, please follow me on Twitter, and let me know what you have to think about the show down in the comment section below. We're going to start off the night with the pre-show, kickoff, or whatever you want to call it, Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. This match was made just a few short weeks ago on Friday Night Smackdown, and not the best build-up you could make, but I can understand that's why it's a pre-show match. I'm ex actually surprised to see Sheamus working a pre-show match instead of a main match on the card. Uh, Damian Sandow hasn't been seen on pay-per-view in quite some time, and tonight I think he's going to be the one to take the fall here. I think Sheamus is going to go in there with a lot of momentum, a lot of hype, and it's just going to be too much for Damian Sandow. So Sheamus is going to get the victory tonight, and... Uh, that's about it for that one. We're going to move on to the Divas title match. Uh, AJ Lee versus Caitlyn. Caitlyn's been so distraught since of what happened with the whole Secret Admirer thing last week on Raw. Uh, you know, the psychological game getting in here, I think that's actually, like, amazing to actually bring in something like to the Divas division that's desperately needed. Uh, the it, They're literally on the cliff towards irrelevancy. They're on the bit, you know, so nobody really exactly cares and AJ and Caitlyn tonight could bring that back up but I do see AJ Lee getting the victory here and becoming the new Divas champion um it seems like it's going to make a lot more sense and um just to see most of the gold go around her Dolph Ziggler and maybe Biggie Lynx in the next few weeks um that could be a sight to see for a lot of fans out there so um there's that we're going to move on to the United States title match sorry if it feels like I'm kind of being too quick we're going to uh, move on to the United States Championship match where Kane will be taking on the defending champion Dean Ambrose of The Shield. This match has had tons of buildup going in, and that's one of the matches that I'm actually looking forward to the most on this card is uh, The Shield matches versus uh, Kane, Daniel Bryan, and Randy Orton later tonight. And these are the matches I'm looking forward to the most because it's like we know The Shield's going to win, but how exactly are they going to win? Are they going to somehow have uh, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns somehow get involved and beat up Kane while the ref is down or something like that. Either way, they got to make Kane, Daniel Bryan, and Randy Orton look good, um, especially Daniel Bryan because I'm going to make a little prediction as to what Daniel Bryan's going to be doing after this pay-per-view, um, but especially Daniel Bryan. Um, nothing really in the future for Randy Orton and Kane, so that's why I predict Dean Ambrose to get the victory and re uh, retain his United States Championship in good fashion. I don't think there's going to be any shield involvement. Um, I think there's just going to be a straight-up fist fight. There's going to be a straight-out brawl with Dean Ambrose getting the victory in the end. Uh, we're going to move on to the tag team title match as well. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns of the Shield will be defending against Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, the unlikely alliance, if you may call them. Uh, these two uh, exchanged words this past week on Friday Night SmackDown, and last week on SmackDown we had even culminated with Randy Orton RKOing Daniel Bryan, this may turn out to be one of the biggest points in Daniel Bryan's career, and that's excluding his TLC victory uh, 2011 when he won the world title to lose it in 18 seconds three months later. Um, but for this match, the Shield are going to win, but the prediction that I want to make for Daniel Bryan's career is that Daniel Bryan will be the one to turn heel tonight. He's going to be the one to attack Randy Orton, and hopefully, maybe, just so likely, Daniel Bryan will enter a program with John Cena for the WWE Championship, or Ryback, but I'll get to that in just a few moments here. Um, I, it's yeah, That'll be amazing to see Daniel Bryan in the WWE title picture. It's desperately needed, and I know, I know what you're saying, you know, hey... Why would they do that with the crowd so over with them? Think about it. They had no problem turning him heel when he was world champion. I don't think this is going to really alter his career. In fact, it'll probably start kickstart his career back up with this whole anger management crap that kind of brought him down a little bit. And now he'll be rising back up the ranks with this loss, and I think he'll be the one to like attack Randy Orton after the match or something like that, You know, getting his revenge after that RKO that he had last week on uh, SmackDown. So... Another quality match here, but I do see The Shield beating Kane, Daniel Bryan, and Randy Orton in their respective matches. Um, I have four matches left, and we're going to kick it off again with the Triple Threat Intercontinental Championship, 
Way Barrett will be defending against The Miz and new participant Curtis Axel in place of Fandango, who recently got a concussion, uh, I believe, last week on SmackDown. Um, another match that I'm kind of awaiting. I mean, it's pretty obvious as to who's going to win now because, you know, look who's gotten the freaking momentum going into this match. Curtis Axel is going to be winning this match. He's going to be the new Intercontinental Champion. And shades of his father, too. His father was one of the best Intercontinental Champions of all time. And hopefully, maybe booked properly, Curtis Axel will do no different. I see Curtis Axel as a future world champion in WWE. But I think we have to give him a little bit more time, a little bit more time to build his character up. Because sometimes people think that Curtis Axel has... He doesn't have... The, quite the personality that his that his father had, excuse me. You know, it may be because he's Paul Heyman guy, and you know Heyman's going to be the one doing all the mic work for him. That's needed because if he can't cut his own promos yet, at least give him some foundation to build off of, which is exactly what they're doing with Paul Heyman here. And that's one of the big reasons why I like uh, the direction that Curtis Axel is going. Um, as for the Miz. I don't like where he's going either. I think he should be in the WWE title picture, but that's just my bias. And Wade Barrett, he should he should be a former heavyweight champion now. I don't know why he's wasting his time with the Intercontinental title. So hopefully tonight Wade Barrett will be the shining star out of this entire thing, including losing the title to Curtis Axel. Uh, next match, the World Heavyweight title match, Alberto Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler. Not a lot of build-up here, but I understand exactly why Dolph Ziggler was out with concussion for about a month now. So, uh, this is his first title defense since... Mm, I think this is his first title defense, actually. Um, I may be wrong there. Or no, he defended in a triple threat match or something like that on SmackDown 1. I don't remember off the top of my head. But, um, I don't think they're going to bring Dolph Ziggler back to lose to Alberto Del Rio. So I think tonight, Dolph Ziggler is going to be getting the win with some upper hand uh, things by Big E Langston and AJ Lee or somehow is going to get involved. Uh, I don't see Del Rio winning this match, but um, I think this is probably going to be one of the better matches of the night. Um, probably definitely in the top three. Um, maybe this be number three at, at best. But uh, I don't expect this match to be um, match of the year candidate nor do I expect it to be the worst match in the card. So I guess you guys can see where I'm putting this match um, where it comes to uh, world title matches. And that's another thing. I don't like where the world titles are. It seems like they're taking, well, especially the world heavyweight title, it feels like it's taking a back seat to the WWE title and to the next match I'm going to talk about. And that's what I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a fan of them kind of just shoving the World Heavyweight title off to the side while they build up these other two matches with great build-up. But like I said, I understand exactly what you guys are saying. Hey, Ziggler was out with concussion. Still, they could have done something with it. Del Rio won a uh, number one contenders match against Swagger last month at Extreme Rules. The least they could have done is have Del Rio go out there, cut a promo on Swagger or something like that, or cut a promo on Ziggler, excuse me, because... Doesn't look like Swagger's going to be getting involved with this match. He's too busy in, I believe, Cleveland Court or something like that. He's in court right now. So uh, with those uh, charges, those DUI charges that I unfortunately didn't get to talk about with you guys. But I think maybe in a future video or something. I'm not exactly sure right now. But right now, Dolph Ziggler will win. And we might see an appearance from Jack Swagger. I wouldn't expect it. Um, in my co-main event, which I believe this is actually the co-main event. Um, I know I'm treating it like a UFC card, but nonetheless, uh, by the way, UFC 161 last night. Anyway, uh, CM Punk will be returning to take on Chris Jericho. In my eyes, will be the best match of the night if CM Punk shows up. Now, I know Punk is in town because he was at the Hawks game yesterday. Unfortunately, we didn't get the victory then, but he was in attendance for the Hawks game yesterday, so I know that he is in town do I know he's going to be at the show? Not necessarily, but I wouldn't expect if he doesn't. Hopefully he does, and we get a quality match out of him and Jericho. What am I talking about? Quality? They're going to freaking put on the show. They're going to put on the show of the year. Show of the century. Everything, you know what I mean? Um, however, if Punk does come back, I do see Chris Jericho getting the victory here. And I know the only reason why I'm saying that is because of two possibilities. One... Punk not even showing up, or two, um, Punk showing up, 
getting like DQ'd or actually losing, and then having Punk turn on Paul Heyman. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that either, but if that's the way WWE goes, that might be the way they have to go because uh, it seems like there's too many Paul Heyman guys, and I guess Punk being the guy on the inside that's kind of getting the information from Paul Heyman, you know, I guess that's where they could go with it. But in my eyes, I think Jericho does need this win night, and it's probably going to be one of his last matches of uh, the summer because apparently he's going to be leaving on tour again with Fozzie, and he's going to be coming back in mid-October now. Um, He's not going to be in town for SummerSlam, not for... Uh, any of these other pay-per-views coming up. I believe his last night with the company will be Money in the Bank or the Raw after Money in the Bank. So don't expect to see Chris Jericho on your TV screens very longer. And, um, you know, that's definitely going to be something sad to see. But I do want to see Jericho get the victory over Punk. I think it's needed um, off of their WrestleMania 28 confrontation. I think it's desperately needed to get Jericho a big win over CM Punk. Um And our last match, the main event of the night, the three stages of hell match for the WWE Championship, Ryback versus John Cena. I think it's pretty obvious where everyone everyone thinks is going with this. It seems like whenever they give those three stages of hell matches or what the hell, two out of three falls, it usually always goes to three falls or it usually goes to uh, the three stages of hell. And it's pretty obvious that it's going to because Ryback comes out in that stupid ambulance all the time. So uh, the first match of the night will be, or the first match of the series will be a lumberjack match with all sorts of WWE superstars uh, circling the ring so Ryback and Cena cannot escape. I think that's where Cena's going to get his first victory. Uh, the second match of the t- is the tables match. That's where Ryback's going to have a lot of momentum. He's going to have a lot of uh, experience with, and he's going to be the one putting Cena through the table. And in the last match... Only three ambulance matches, I or no, not three ambulance matches, excuse me, three three stages of hell matches, and all of them including Triple H, by the way. But uh, ambulance matches, some great ones were Kane and Shane McMahon from, uh, oh God, I don't want to feel, find like I'm talking out of my ass here. I don't remember off the top of my head. So uh, John Cena is going to be getting the victory in this entire thing, though. That's what I see happening, and unfortunately, I don't want to see that happen either because I don't want to see Ryback plummet down the card again. I don't want to see Ryback go to SmackDown to win the World Heavyweight title in case Del Rio does win it. I hope that's not exactly what happens, and I hope to God that WWE does not screw up Ryback with having him lose that ambulance match tonight. All in all, I think payback tonight could be a major flop and that's coming from me this is coming from the guy who praised extreme rules for being so good this is the guy who praised tna slammiversary for being so good and hopefully wwe cannot disappoint this summer they simply can't they're starting to run low the economy is really coming down low and they they can't afford to put on a bad show and i think honestly this may be a pretty bad show i mean what do you expect? It's taking capital punishments time slot. So anyway, what do you guys think about tonight? Leave me your predictions and previews down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to uh, follow me on Twitter for some live stream tweets and, you know, discuss the pay-per-view with me. What do you guys think should happen tonight? Should Daniel Bryan be the one turning heel? Should Cena beat Ryback? Should Ziggler defend his, or should he uh, retain his world title? And could Curtis Axel become a as good of an intercontinental champion as his father so let me know what you guys have to think about that and i will talk to you guys later tonight or early tomorrow for my payback review anyway that's it for me i'm out perry the entertainer signing out peace